Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, June 19th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier today looked at some obfuscated JavaScript that he found surprise on a compromised WordPress website. This JavaScript was in so far different in that it targeted particular mobile browsers. And you may have seen some ads on websites that really sort of render the website almost unusable on mobile devices. Now, this is typically not due to malware, just some badly written ads, I believe. But in this particular case, it was a compromised website that then used JavaScript in order to inject these ads. Well, Xavier was observing these ads, they just redirected to spam. Now, for the most part, of course, this can change at any moment whenever the attacker gets more money for, for example, redirecting users to malware. And these days, of course, security camera vulnerabilities are always something to pay attention to given all the botnets hunting for them. And we do have a new set of them. This time they're affecting more higher end cameras made by Axis. Axis makes a wide range of cameras. They all essentially run the same software. So pretty much all of them are vulnerable. Probably the most severe of these vulnerabilities is an authentication bypass. At least it's not a default password, but something similarly easy to exploit. Turns out that in order to launch commands on the camera, you have to use a file name with the .srv extension, but the authentication system doesn't necessarily validate the path correctly. So if you're appending an URL, a file name that ends in .srv to a file name that you have access to like index.html, then you may be able to trigger a command without actually requiring a username and a password. Now, starting with that and a number of other vulnerabilities that can be exploited using this authentication bypass, you may have full access over the camera and run arbitrary code. Given the ease with which these vulnerabilities can be exploited, I would expect to see these vulnerabilities to show up in exploits pretty quickly and be added to the standard botnet code. The standard rule applies, do not expose any cameras like this directly to the internet. And of course, apply patches quickly. I hope Axis will make patches available for some of the out of support cameras. Axis has a little bit of habit of moving cameras off support pretty quickly. And two researchers independently wrote a blog post about some interesting behavior of Apple's Quick Look feature. Quick Look essentially allows you to take, as the name implies, a quick look at a file before you open it. Now, the trick here is that in order to create and optimize uh, these images, these images are saved in a fixed directory. The problem comes in if the image that you looked at was stored on an encrypted drive, but this preview or cache directory is not located on an encrypted drive. In this case, details about data stored on an encrypted drive could leak. Now, this is always a problem when you're dealing with encrypted volumes where you only have one disk encrypted, not another disk, that there's always a possibility of data leakage uh, between those two disks. In this case, in particular, your boot disk would have to be unencrypted. So if you are relying on disk encryption, always make sure the system disk or boot disk, as well as your home directory, if it's on a different disk, are encrypted. Otherwise, you are risking losing some of your data to these unencrypted resources. According to one of the blogs, uh, this particular issue has been known for a few years now. Not really surprised about this, but sort of treated somewhat as a professional secret among forensicators. And it looks like Andy, a popular Android emulator, 
is coming with a crypto coin miner as an unadvertised addition. Now, Andy itself is supposed to allow you to play Android games and the like and use Android software on a Windows PC. The installer itself actually already does trigger a number of antivirus alerts according to VirusTotal. It does appear to be at least adware. Also, it looks like the Andy team isn't really quite honest here either. The user that Richard discovered this issue with the crypto coin miner has raised the issue with Andy developers a couple times on Facebook only to be blocked from their Facebook group. So be careful with this software if you have installed it and better take a second look that it didn't come with any unwanted add-ons. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.